Frederick fiddles with the wristmatic controls of his Eva suit, activating his helmet's flashlight. He needs his vision back as soon as possible. Whatever or whoever is in here with him, he needs to see it. Based on what happened during the last hour, this could be anything. A machine intelligence has fallen into disrepair and gone haywire. An insane person left behind in this outpost, or even something more out of this world. He almost laughs at himself at the thought, but it could be aliens. But for now, he at least has his vision back. The small cone of light his helmet provides casts through the absolute darkness, allowing him to see at least a tiny portion of his environment. He can still hear the slow music, and for some reason it actually terrifies him a bit. The stark contrast of his current emotional state and the calming sounds of the melody create a horrifying atmosphere that's only highlighted by his lightless surroundings. A feeling overcomes him. A feeling like somebody was standing right behind him, just waiting to end him then and there. Lurking just outside of his field of vision, ever present. He can practically feel them holding onto his head, like a cold breeze from behind his neck. Trying to fight his instinctual fear, he opens his tool pack and grabs a hammer, clutching it in his right fist. With a weapon, he should feel safer, right? He isn't made for this kind of thing. But somehow he found himself in this situation. That bit of survival training back then also didn't include how to defend yourself against an invisible threat that just locks you in an abandoned outpost on the fucking moon. His heart beating way faster than it should be, he tries to think. God, what the fuck should I do? He can feel his legs shaking from the adrenaline pumping through his veins, his arms twitching, ready to fight the enemy at any moment. The door closed as soon as I stepped in here. Wait, no, it didn't. I did something with the control pad, and then the transmission changed, and that's when the door closed, but why did it close? I don't have access to the system, something else made it close, but what? And why? Suddenly, a realisation hits him. Whatever sent the signal, it must have called him here, wanted him trapped in here, all alone. This is even worse than he thought initially. Okay, 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 calm down, calm down. Nothing bad's happened yet, stop reading into things. This is only making it worse. Keep calm. He tries to calm his agitated mind, and takes a few deep breaths. Still holding the hammer, he turns around to face the room, and tries to make out his surroundings. What's most important right now is not to lose his focus. Whatever is at play here, he needs to be at the top of his game for it. He needs to be prepared. If he slips up, consequences will be immense. By now, the music has turned into background noise, as his mood shifts from frightened to focused. He needs a plan, something he can focus on. First things first, I need to take care of vision. He once again reaches into his tool pack and takes out a portable construction spotlight, turning it on with a flick of a switch. Instantly, the room is either brightly lit directly by the spotlight, or at least dimly lit by the indirect illumination provided by the surrounding walls. This room is about the size of an average living room back on Earth, but the size is about the only thing they have in common. Feeling safer in the light, he stores the hammer on his chest, using a provided strap. His left hand still holding the spotlight, he sets it down on the ground and aims it at the ceiling, trying to maximise the room's illumination. Now that he can actually see, he tries to orient himself properly. What even is this place? Behind him lies the entrance, with his airtight door still sealed shut. In front of him there are a few desks with terminals, topped over chairs, a few shelves, lockers and cabinets. The whole room looks rather messy, like someone either set it up in a rush, or something bad happened here. Also, there are some traces of dust on virtually every surface. At least no bodies. He kneels down and looks at the dust, picks up a few bigger particles and rubs them between the fingers of his thick glove. Both the texture and the colour of it are off. Lunar dust is especially coarse and obviously grey. This, however, is not the case with whatever covers the floor. This dust is very fine, and has an almost golden colour to it instead. This is no lunar dust. But I also don't think that there is gold on the moon. What is this stuff? Increasing the pressure with which he rubs the dust, the small particles crumble into even smaller pieces. Suddenly, his flashlight flickers and a brief static interrupts the music. What? He waits for any other reactions, grabbing the handle with his hammer again, but not yet pulling it from his strap. A few moments pass, but the brief malfunction seems to have been the end of whatever happened this time. Feeling the air is clear again, for now at least, he lets go of his hammer. Interesting. His mind racing with thoughts, he stands back up again and walks over towards one of the desks. 
The tower not sitting on top of it looks like it has seen better days, but aside from the strange dust that's covering it, nothing seems to be broken. Maybe this will be able to deliver some answers. He grabs the chair that's currently lying on the ground and places it back on his feet. Taking a seat on it, he searches for any kind of power button on the dusty, lifeless terminal. There it is. Wow, this really is old stuff, huh? That would at least somewhat answer the question whether or not this place has been abandoned recently, or for a while. As it seems, this station has been abandoned for quite a while, easily 25 years, judging by the design. But he has no luck with turning it on. He presses the button, but the machine doesn't even give him a hint of turning on. Yeah, figures. Lights are out, after all, but that transmission would still need a working transmitter. Some parts must have power left, but getting it to here is too much work. I only got oxygen for a few hours. His heart sinks at the realisation. Or did he already know, just denying it the whole time? He is working with limited time here. If he takes too long to get it back out again, that's it. Dead. He swallows and tries to dismiss the thought. Panicking would only make things worse. Taking a look across the room to make sure he is still by himself, a thought crosses his mind. If he can't bring the power to it, bring it to the power. That's it. He scoots the chair closer to the desk and grabs the terminal. Judging by his age, this should be feasible. Pulling it off his shoulder, he sets his tool pack down on the table and searches for his smaller hand tools. After a quick search, he found them and places them on the desk, next to the old terminal. Time to get working. Within a matter of minutes, and with the old terminal's guts spread all across the desk, he extracts the memory module from it, unharmed. Now that he holds it in his hands, accessing it is the next challenge. Even though they use a standardised connector, it is, one, an internal connector, and two, old. His suit won't be able to directly connect to it like this, so modifications are required. If I remember it right, this pin is data, this one is ground, this one is power. Completely focused on the task, he goes back to searching his tool pack and takes out a spool of filigree cable, as well as a connector cable that fits his suit. Cold welding, don't let me down, please. A few minutes of stripping wires and holding exposed copper wires together pass, and he finally holds a jury rig cable in his hands. Eureka, time to pray. Please let this work. He crosses his fingers and, after plugging the cable into the memory module, connects it to his suit's external data port. Nothing happens. Well, that is either good or bad. Damn it. Raising his left arm in front of his face, he tries to navigate the small screen, looking for anything new. Come on, read the format, you stupid piece of... He stops scrolling, as he grins like a five-year-old boy after pranking their parents. Internal data storage. External data storage. Mining operation logs. Personal logs. Wireless connections. 